The California assault weapon ban has been upheld, but not in the way a lot of people think. I'm gonna clear that up here because this is important. I got a lot of people who reached out and said, Jared, you didn't cover what Judge Benitez said about upholding the assault weapon ban. And guys, the truth is that this is a confusing thing. There's a bunch of layers of, uh, of courts, you know, state and federal, and multiple challenges to assault weapon bans, specifically in California. But the ruling that came out this past week, a couple days ago, was not Judge Benitez. This was a state level appellate court. So this is a state court. And the case that we're talking about here is the people versus Alex Andy Boca Negra. Now, this case, the defendant Boca Negra slept with his friend's girlfriend. Boca Negra's married, slept with his friend's girlfriend. Sometime later, his friend slept with Boca Negra's wife, allegedly by force. Boca Negra was pissed, not that he slept with his girlfriend, but that he returned the favor, uh, allegedly by force. And so he went to his friend's house with three firearms, one of them being an AR-15, broke the window, fired some shots in the house. Uh, his friend jumped out the back window and Boca Negro was charged and found guilty with a bunch of stuff, one of them being possession of an assault weapon. Boca Negro appealed, uh, citing Bruin, saying that it was the assault weapon ban was unconstitutional per Bruin. And what this state court did was do an end around of Bruin. They went and said, we're going to latch on to Heller. We're going to latch on to the, uh, the People versus Miller, which was a terrible case. And they just ignored the text, history, and tradition part. I'll show you a couple snippets of it, but I want to put people at ease. This is not Judge Benitez. We haven't heard from him yet. And I'm thinking he was waiting for this to come out first for another thing that he can jot down in his decision when he destroys it. Judge Benitez is in the federal district court in San Diego. This is a state appellate court. Two different things. Judge Benitez will strike it down, guys and gals. I mean, he did it before. He will do it again, my belief. So let's talk about some, some of the things that this case discusses, and I want you to see how bad it is. Let's go over the party's contentions with section 30605 of California Penal Code. It says the defendant asserts his conviction on count three for possession of an assault weapon must be reversed because section 30605 violates his second amendment right to bear arms. According to the defendant, section 30605 does not pass the simplified historical test dictated by the United States Supreme Court in Bruin. The attorney general of California disagrees. Among other things, the Attorney General asserts that two pre-Bruin California cases that upheld the statutory predecessor to Section 30605 remain good law. We agree with the Attorney General and conclude that that section does not violate the Second Amendment as construed by Heller. <laughs> so what they're saying is the, the AG, obviously, who bans this, these guns, is never going to agree that they should be overturned because of Bruin. And because pre-Bruin, there were two laws that were upheld, well, he thinks that they should still be banned. And we're going to get into Bruin a little more here in a minute. The statute the defendant challenges here, section 3605, provides in pertinent part any person who within this state possesses any assault weapon, except as provided in this chapter, which is cops and military, shall be punished by imprisonment in a county jail for a period not exceeding one year or by imprisonment pursuant to subdivision H of section 1170. The court then goes on to say that when California banned assault weapons in 1989, since then, they cannot be commonly owned for lawful self-defense because they've been banned since 1989. And that's what they're using as a precipice for this ruling. Guys, this is, like I said, this case is terrible. This, these, this judge, I'll, I'll give the, the judges this. They worked really hard to figure out a, a, a way to try to get around it but even this falls flat on its face. Now they go into the Heller decision and how Heller said that you know, DC couldn't ban handguns and also how the second amendment extends to some weapons, not all weapons, those for military service. I mean, that was one of the, the things in, in Heller that was a big mistake by the court. But yeah, we hear about it all the time with the anti-gunners when they're trying to go around, in this case, Bruin. Now the Miller decision had to do with short barrel shotguns and they work really hard, several paragraphs, on saying that uh, they're dangerous and unusual, short barrel shotguns, which is why they're under the NFA, and that AR-15s 
are similar to those, so they're also dangerous and unusual. They made a jump in this decision that says, yeah, AR-15s, they're a dangerous unusual, which means they should be in FA items, which is what I just told you in the video about the other day. This is another court trying to do that. And because of that, they just keep talking about Heller and Miller, and they don't really address what Bruin said. Let's go to the analysis here. Applying the test originally established in Heller, which the Supreme Court said was one step too far in Bruin, to California statute prohibiting the possession of assault weapons now set forth in section blah blah blah, we again conclude that the Second Amendment's plain text does not cover defendant's conduct. Assault weapons like the AR-15 style rifle police found in the defendant's car are, like the short barrel shotgun addressed in Miller, weapons not typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes. Rather, these are dangerous and unusual weapons. These weapons have a great deal in common with the military M16 rifle. As the Supreme Court has stated of such weapons, the AR-15 is the civilian version of the military's M16. And further, as stated in Zonduric and James, two other cases, the assault weapons that are the subject of Section 30605 are at least as dangerous and unusual as the short barrel shotgun, which Miller concluded was outside the scope of the Second Amendment's guarantee. Now, the court also says several times that the defendant was not acting as a law-abiding citizen, so therefore, Bruin doesn't apply. Let's, let's talk about this. Let's read this. Check this out, because I think it should be obvious as soon as I say it. That assault weapons such as defendant's AR-15 rifle are weapons not typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes, such as short barrel shotguns, has not changed since the courts in James and Zondorek considered the issue. And because California statute prohibiting the possession of assault weapons has been upheld and operative in the interim, by definition, and with exemptions that need not be discussed here, these weapons are not presently possessed by law-abiding citizens in California for lawful purposes. We acknowledge, of course, that these weapons may be in common use in other jurisdictions. However, the scope of our concern is limited to California and the constitutionality of Section 30605. And in this regard, we note that that section and its predecessor have been upheld repeatedly for over more than 30 years. We further note that while it is but one jurisdiction, it is difficult to conceive of California as an outlier. Now they go up and admit, yeah, they might be common use everywhere else in this country, but we're only talking about California and they've been banned here for over 30 years, so they can't be commonly owned. Uh, so yeah, in that 30 plus years, that's enough history uh, and tradition for us. So we're gonna uphold it. The defendant relies extensively on Bruin in making his argument that section 30605 violates the second amendment. Bruin did not analyze whether a particular type of firearm is protected under the second amendment. Rather, Bruin focused on whether New York's statutory public carry licensing scheme violates the Second Amendment right to carry handguns in public for self-defense. The Supreme Court in Bruin held that when the Second Amendment's plain text covers an individual's conduct, the Constitution presumptively protects that conduct. To justify its regulation, the government may not simply posit that the regulation promotes an important interest. Rather, the government must demonstrate that the regulation is consistent with this nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. Only if a firearm regulation is consistent with this nation's historical tradition may the court conclude that the individual's conduct falls outside the Second Amendment's qualified command. The defendant asserts that because no such historical tradition of regulating assault weapons exists, his conviction for violating the section must be reversed. Now, this is where the court is hanging their hat. They're saying that what he was doing is illegal and therefore Bruin doesn't apply. But the action he takes, that is when he becomes a criminal. The possession of the firearm is the Second Amendment and it covers it, therefore it applies. It's presumptively constitutional, possessing those firearms. Now, if you go out and kill people, then that's an act, that's a criminal act that should be dealt with. This is where the court screwed up. We agree with the decisions in Zondorak and James upholding the statutory predecessor to Section 30605 on the ground that assault weapons like the AR-15 style rifle police found in the defendant's car are weapons not typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes and are at least as dangerous and unusual as the short barrel shotgun, which Miller concluded was outside the scope of the Second Amendment's guarantee.
In short, as did the courts in James and Zondorak, we conclude California's prohibition of possession of assault weapons, now at Section 30605, does not violate the Second Amendment as construed by Heller. This is settled law. That's the crux of the case, guys. And they said, you know, California can't, California can't be considered an outlier because we're so big and there's so many people here. Our economy is so huge. Our budget is ginormous. So, yeah, we're going to uphold this. Now, does it suck? Absolutely. Is it wrong? 200% because Bruin, just the reading of it, destroys this case. So now what happens? This will get challenged. But in the meantime, we're still waiting for Judge Benitez. He hasn't come out with his ruling yet. I think he was waiting for this little stuff to happen, this... This BS end around that he saw coming from the anti-gunners because they've been talking about it publicly, what they were going to do. He will slap it down. Judge Benitez typically does things on Fridays, and in some situations he's done it on weekends, which is why I waited until today, today's Sunday, when I'm recording this, because I thought maybe he was going to lay it down last night, Saturday night. Um, who knows, maybe this Friday. That's what he usually does. Usually Friday on the, uh, the last minute of the day, he'll drop it or something over the weekend, but guys and gals, Judge Benitez is got a lot of people who said, see what he did? He went against us. He didn't. He hasn't done anything yet. Um, so keep the faith, California. Keep the faith. Guys and gals, let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think about this case. And until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe. I wanted you to see this, to see how these courts are now working post-Bruin to try to ignore what the Supreme Court said, to figure out ways to create their own tests, kind of like all of the, the smaller, the lower courts did after Heller. They're going to do it again after Bruin, but we have some things that are ready to go kaboom, and uh, the assault weapon ban is one of them. I'll see you all in the next one. Please like the video, share the video, please help it get out, and subscribe down below. The fact that people think that Benitez did this means that people need to see the video. I hope you can help me. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.